Wait, wait I, put, I put myself uh, on the do not disturb position. Okay. You still hear me? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, I'm going to do a little um, intro, and then we'll uh, we'll get this rolling, okay? Okay. All right, Metalheads, this is DJ Rem from Metalhead Radio, and I have Jerhar from Eternal Flight. How are you today, sir? Oh, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Hope uh, everybody's listening are fine, too. Excellent. So let's go ahead and start with, go ahead and, you know, because it's just you, go ahead and mention um, the rest of the members of the band and obviously yourself and what your positions in the band are. Okay, so um, I've been founding the band in the 2001, and uh, I'm the lead lead singer, and I play also some, some keyboards, and I, I mainly write uh, most of the stuff, uh, especially for the last album, and um, also in the band, that there's uh, there are now two two guitar players. Uh, now there's Chris Gaujon and uh, uh, Chris, <laughs> another Chris, Chris Offredi on the guitars. There's also Julien Racine uh, on the drums, and um, Adrien Zoni on the on the bass, and uh, so I'm, I'm Gérard, lead vocalist, and uh, I also produce the album. And uh, wow, you're busy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I also play guitar, uh, acoustic guitars, and keyboards on the album, and. Uh, uh, as the the lineup was not completed for the, this album, uh, I also played the, the the bass. So I did a lot of a lot of things on on the album. Also uh, on the album, um, th there's been some some guests, uh, and it was the first time uh, we had many guests on on the album, especially coming from outside France, uh, because we're coming from the Alps in France and. Um, at this time, there was uh, Ricardo Confessori from Angra and Shaman who played the drums. Uh, and there, there's been some uh, U.S. guitarists that played some solos, too. Uh, with uh, There was um, Mark McGee, who is uh, the guitar player from Left Planet, but he is more known in the middle field for having been... Uh, one of the lead guitar players of uh, Vicious Rumors, and uh, also the uh, Chris Caffery from um, Trans Siberian Orchestra, and the ex guitarist of Sabotage played uh, also a solo on the album. And uh, there's also uh, a Swedish guitarist, not Mamstein, <laughs> but uh, a, a um, super talented guy named uh, Rob Love Magnussen, who was playing on a band called Dynasty, who played some solos too. And uh, on the Eternal Fall li lineup that recorded, there, there was also, he, he just quit the band, there was also uh, Julien Bouvier, who recorded uh, all the rhythm guitars and uh, the uh, most of the uh, lead guitars on the album, but he's been replaced recently because of uh, uh, professional and uh, familial uh, commitments. And uh, Christopher Freddy, who was the previous lead guitar player, came back in the band. Very cool. That's that's quite the lineup you got there. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite a family, a metal family. <laughs> Excellent. Well, metal families rock, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you've been together like 11 years. Then, what um what what was that? What was the driving force to start the band at the beginning? Um, I think that um at, before Eternal Flight, uh, I was part of a band called Dream Child that was uh, that released two albums in the 90s, and the second one was um, released by Metal Blade Records, and um, in 2001, uh, I was the only remaining member of the band, so I decided to to, to start uh, something new, but without forgetting the, the past. That's why the, the band I, I I founded again was 
was named Eternal Flight with uh, that was the name of uh, an old song of the band Rimside. And um, I wanted to pursue the mix of melodic power metal with progressive arrangements. Um, that was what I was known for and uh, also um, I really like to write songs in uh, mixing these two styles. So for me it was obvious that it was a, a continuation. And uh, with, this, uh, with the new guys uh, in Eternal Flight we uh, started to write songs together and to arrange songs that I had for uh, for the for Dreamside first, and but uh, also we, we we did some new stuff and uh, we recorded a, a demo in 2002 and we had uh, uh, after that a deal with um, an Italian label called Cruz del Sur Music and in 2004 we we published our first album Posey the Rage and uh, in 2007 another label with uh, another sign of will uh, which was released in the US also by Nightmare Records but the main idea uh, beyond Eternal Flight was to uh, for me to pursue uh, my career in the power prog metal genre and um, for me it's a pleasure it's a passion to do that well very good well, I'm glad because you guys sound really good I really like your sound so Oh, thank you a lot. And uh, it's quite um, interesting because uh, we, have, we have really great reactions from the United States. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's maybe because uh, uh, Eternal Flight uh, has a lot of um, U.S. heavy metal and poor metal influences like uh, uh, Queen Size, Crimson Glory, Vicious from Old Savatage. Uh, that are a part of uh, the sound of the band, and not only, but uh, for, for me, uh, th th this kind of, um, of bands, also like Dream Theater, have been uh, forging kind of the sound of, of the band at first, and um, I think that that's maybe one of the, the reasons uh, we have... Uh, Many fans from the U.S. and and uh, the, the 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 media are uh, really positive toward uh, our albums there. Yeah, and I can totally appreciate that because, um, from my own perspective, there isn't a whole lot of that power metal sound like you guys have coming out of the states. So people are looking elsewhere, and you know, Italy and Europe as a whole is where I'm finding it. I'm finding so many killer bands from your area of the world. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a kind of not, not a tradition, but um, I don't know why, but 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 uh, it's still popular, even if uh, it's not trendy. Um, I would say, but uh, there's still a lot of people uh, listening to uh, real metal or to to power metal or progressive metal there, and um, there, there are many labels signing and. Um, Maybe it's it's easier. It's it's also very popular in in, in countries like Germany. So maybe it's it's more easy for for bands in Europe to to release album and uh, after being able to to uh, seduce the uh, U.S. crowds and, uh, and listeners. Yeah, exactly. And I tell you what, you know, there's, so, you know, anybody can scream and have metal going on with them. Not, not everybody can actually sing like you guys <laughs> and still have okay. metal, you know? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to, um, to put a, a lot of melody in, uh, in my singing, uh, even when I'm, I make some uh, falsetto, I, I pitch screams. I, I try to always make it in a melodic, uh, organic um, way. Uh, I think uh, it's important for me also to, uh, to spread some feelings uh, even when, when the, uh, the, the technical ability is high. I, I mean, for me, the most important thing is the, 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 the style of voice and not only the technical abilities. So that, that's why 
maybe it's um, it's easy to 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 listen to to our kind of band. I hope. Right. Yep. So um, what's the what's the music scene like where you guys are at right now? Is there, is there a lot of opportunity to play a lot of shows? Um, the last shows we played uh, were mainly as uh, headliners in France. Uh, but in the past, we played also with um, bands like Freedom Call, um, Paragon, two bands from Germany, uh, also uh, a French band uh, called Nightmare, who are on ASM Records. And uh, but that's for sure that we would like to um, to have an uh, opening slot for uh, a real tour uh, because that would. Uh, open a lot of door for the band but um one thing you have to know and i think you know that that, that sometimes it costs a lot when you're uh, doing this kind of thing because you have some tour or support or and things like that and the problem is that uh, um also the, the sales of cds have um have gone down and it's not easy to to find some finances to 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 tour properly and with some bigger bands. Right, right. And you know, most bands I talk to are they they really can't make any money off CD sales. It's all off merchandise. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, but the, the the problem also now is that um, there's a worldwide crisis and uh, um, it's it's not uh, always easy to bring people to to concert too. Right, exactly. Because um, they have less money, and uh, maybe yeah, they they will buy the ticket, but will buy a, a few drink, but maybe less merchandising, less and less CD for sure. Right. But uh, we try our best to to find more concerts, and we will play more also in 2011 and uh, 12. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we 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 will keep on co- uh, we will continue to to, to make concerts, whatever happens. And uh, it's also our passion, and and we we like to play live. Um, and uh, there's a lot of um, energy and and fun on stage with either in flight, even if some some songs are serious or. But uh, I think the people can relate to to our passion. Right, exactly. So, do you have any shows lined up coming up? Um, we. The problem is that uh, um, the members of Eternal Flights have also some some other bands, and uh, it's not easy all, uh, to to settle some some tours uh, or many shows right. uh, at the same time. Uh, but uh, in May, we April and May, we, we will um, we'll make more and more shows. There are already some some shows that uh, that have been sold. Um, but uh, I really hope that one day we we uh, we can come in in your country, for example, because uh, as I said before, many people uh, send us messages and or buy the album, and it's uh, really encouraging and. There's always been some positive uh, reactions, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to to make things happen you know, to 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 tour there too. Yeah, that'd be very cool. Yeah, while we're talking about that, where can people buy this album right now if they want to buy it? Oh, they can um, they can buy it in in, in sites like. Uh, um, Lady Baby, uh, Amazon. Um, uh, we have also a, a label in a, in a distributor in, in Europe who's called Easter Rock, and they sell it on, on their sites. And uh, uh, I think there are m- many sites uh, all over the world to buy the uh, the album. Uh, for example, in the United States, you have uh, sites like CM Distro. Uh, uh, Omega the end, uh, um, and and also uh, we have a, a link on the MySpace page on the blog section 
from of the band, so they can go to eternal flight there. And they, they, uh, there's uh, on the blog section there are many links where people can buy the album. Okay. And, and also, if uh, if some people want to buy directly to the band, they can write us on Facebook or on MySpace or Revenue Nation. And uh, because some some people sometimes ask us to to buy the album and to sign it, you know, and to have maybe posters or stuff like that. And for for sure, it's a pleasure for us to to sell directly and uh, to write a few words to the fans and to exchange things and and to talk. Uh, and um, I invite the people to to write us and yeah, we always answer. Okay, very cool. I have to let you know I was um uh, I was listening to one of the DJ shows on Metalhead Radio last night, and I, and I heard one of your tracks play, so that was pretty cool. Excellent. So, we keep talking about the album here. The, you mentioned that you, you said you produced it? Yeah. So, where did you record it at? Um, in the past, I was recording already the, the albums of, uh, of Eternal Flight, uh, but it was with a, a kind of a, a mobile studio. And uh, since 2009, uh, I built or made, made build uh, a little studio in, in the basement of my uh, my house, and uh, um, so I recorded it in in my studio called More Phoenix, and uh, I sometimes also record other bands. This is not my uh, principal activity, but uh, I think the cool thing with uh, having the studio is uh, is that. Um, uh, we can take time to to record and to uh, not make things in in hurry, and we can rethink things. For for example, sometimes I changed my vocal line a, a few times, and and uh, as I'm the owner of the studio, I had the chance to do that without uh, spending much money. Um, so yeah, for me, it's a, it's a, also a, a great creative aspect. Not only uh, because it can help us fi financially, it's also because I like to um, to make a kind of uh, sculpting the, the, the sound of the band and and make it uh, effective and uh, not having to to give it to a, another pe person who will mix or produce it and maybe with a uh, uh, different ideas, and uh, for, for me it's important. So, so the last album, yeah, was, was created, was was uh, recorded, mixed, and mastered in, in the studio, except for the the, the drum parts of um, Ricardo Confessori. Uh, they, they were done in a studio in in Brazil because uh, at first, yeah, he, we wanted uh, both to to record in my studio, but because of a some schedule and also the fact that um, it would have cost a, a lot of money to, to bring him from Brazil to France. Uh, right. It was not possible. So I sent him some, some mix, some files, and he sent me back uh, uh, his room files via internet. So that's uh, an interesting thing about technology now is that uh, uh, you can make magic <laughs> without meeting the person and uh that's a great thing and and the same uh for 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 the guest uh, guitarists they i send them some uh, some mix uh with the most of the tracks and they they record it there separately uh their their, their tracks their, their lead guitar tracks and uh, i edited and mixed after all the all the things in my studio. Yeah, that's that's so cool. That's that's what's so awesome about, about technology today. I mean, just, you know, it's obviously there's still some cost, but it's not near the cost as um, you know, paying a studio to your recording and you can just do it yourself. That's, you know, it's it's awesome. Yeah, and and, and the tools are um much easier to to um, to use them in the past, and uh, for, for example, I, I never, I never learned in a school or or whatever uh, to to use all these things. I uh, I learned it by by myself, and, and I think a lot of musicians and, and people 
uh, use these technologies with, without uh, without 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 being in a school, uh, sound school or whatever, uh, engineer sound school or and uh, that's what is great is that uh, it's more easier to uh, maybe make also make demos before to record a proper album. You you can have uh, a, be a better outlook on how a song will will sound before to record it properly for for the album, and uh, it um, it helps creativity I think, uh, and uh, also uh, I think it's awesome to. To exchange things and to, to share things with people that that, uh, that you admire. Uh, I mean, I'm a I'm a big Savatage and and Vicious Robbers Angra fan, and for me it was kind of um, a, a miracle <laughs> to have them on the album. It was kind of a, of a dream come true. Yeah, it's very cool. And uh, without this technology, uh, uh, it, it would have been, I think, uh, not impossible, but uh, much harder and um, financially uh, impossible to do things, I think. Yeah, no doubt. So so how often are you guys as a band able to get together and practice together? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. How often are you guys able as a band to get together and practice? Oh, we practice every week. Um, and uh, we also work at home. Uh, with some some recordings and, and stuff we can exchange like, like we say uh, we can send mails with with some sound files and work stuff like, like that at home but we try yeah to 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 to, to work uh, all together as a band every week we are we're coming from this the all from the same state and uh, nearly the same area so in uh, 20 minutes, we are all there at the same point, so I think it's cool. Yeah, that's very nice. It's nice to live in the same area and do that. Yeah, 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 for sure. It, it was not always the case in the past, and uh, uh, f for example, with the the old lineup that recorded the first two albums, it was not uh, always possible, uh, and uh, in the end, we, we were rehearsing like every two months, Two months and half, it was not possible to continue like that. So that, that's one of the reasons that caused the, the split in 2009, and that, that, that uh, I, re I had to rebuild a new lineup because of that. But now, um, yeah, we we see each other often. There's a, a great vibe between us. Uh, yeah, I have a great lineup, and uh, each concert now is is great. Yeah, I always love when I, I always like asking that question because I always get such a varied response. Sometimes I talk to bands, and they don't even live in the same country as, and I just it's amazing that they're even able to maintain anything. Yes, uh, I mean uh, that's that's a part of life. Uh, it's right. not always easy uh, after a lot of years to 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 be able to. To keep the fire inside the, each band member, you know, it's uh, people sometimes changes and they have some other goals in life, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, it, this kind of things happens. Uh, it's like it's like a, um, everyday life. I mean, you you have some change in your life, and so you have also some some change in, in the same. Um, but I think that uh, since um, a few years, um, it's it's not easy to keep a band going united because uh, there are so many opportunities. Uh, so many band members play in other bands and record stuff because uh, at a certain time, if you had only one band, you could maybe leave up your music. But after the 80s and 90s, it was not possible. So right. the, 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 the musicians... Uh, I've started in the I started since the 90s to to record and tour with uh, other bands in order to to pay the bills and uh, also as as uh, I said before technology helped also to uh, to reach each other 
um, more easily uh, between countries and, and stuff. So uh, that's a, a good thing. And at the same time, maybe it's not uh, always a good thing because um, uh, it's not easy to schedule something with, with the same band members all the time. And um, for that, I um, I regret a bit the, the past because there was more some some unity within each band member. It was more a real family, and and now it's more opportunities. I, I would say. Right. Yeah, I I totally hear you. Unfortunately, life gets in the way. Mm-hmm. So what um, one of the other things I love about the album is is the cover and the artwork on it. Who uh, who designed that? Um, so it's uh, a, a guy, a young guy from from Geneva in Switzerland, uh, called uh, Thibaut Viglino. Um, in fact, I gave him some singing lessons, and he <laughs> he accepted to to make the the, the artwork because he's a a, 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 gra- a web de- uh, uh, a graphist, you know, yep. and and uh, he's much more better in computers and, and graph than I am. <laughs> so I asked him to do to do the, this exchange, and um, he uh, he worked on on, on the ideas I, I asked for the the artwork and also uh, maybe you didn't see the booklets, and uh, we we did a precise work on the on the lyrics and. Uh, it's really related to the the, the concept and and uh, the artwork is quite uh, I like it too because it's it's kind of mysterious. It's not um, okay. You see the moon, the the logo, but at the same time there's a strange form uh, on the moon, and everybody can have its own interpretation of this uh, this this kind of logo or, or form on the moon. And that's what uh, why the album is, is called uh, "Diminished Reality: Elegies and Mysteries." The mysteries are there, and everybody can have its own truth about the lyrics, and uh, can interpret uh, the thing in their own way. Yeah. Well. And, uh, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And um, for the artworks, too, uh, we worked first on. Um, on a kind of basic artwork I, I did first because I I took some pictures and uh, I had some pictures of the moon and stuff and some trees and uh, he came back with his uh, much better <laughs> artwork with um, uh, United Colors and uh, it fits very well the, the, the subjects of the album that are based on dreams and on on the night environment and uh, it's it's quite a, a a different kind of artwork, I think, uh, when you compare it to other power metal, progressive metal bands. I think it's um, there's a kind of aura <laughs> on this uh, on this artwork. That's what I think. Maybe other people have another uh, idea about that, but. Um, yeah, I was really happy about it. Yeah, that's cool. I I just I really appreciate it when bands put put some time and effort into the artwork on the cover. I mean, it's it's kind of part of the art of with you know the music's art, the cover's art. It's all kind of art. It kind of all just flows together. I dig it. Yeah, everything is linked. Uh, I think the the music, the the image, and uh, it was really important to to have something strong for for this album because. Uh, also, I wanted the people to to stop when they they, they, they were seeing the artwork uh, because also the, the the last album was re was released in 2007 and uh, this one was released end of um, 2011 and uh, I wanted it to attire the attention and uh, also to complete the the lyrics of the album perfectly because uh, it's a concept album, so uh, the the lyrics were really important in that album, maybe more than in the past because they have also influenced a part of the of the music too. Sure. There was an interaction between uh, 
the music, the lyrics, and uh, the artwork. And uh, I think it's a solid uh, kind of um, back team. Yep, very cool. What um, what kind of what got you into music? You know, when you were growing up, what were you listening to that, you know, wh or what, what was that point in your life where you're like, you know, this is what I want to do with my life, and this is what I want to dedicate so much time to? Oh, um, personally, uh, it was uh, when I was, I think, <laughs> six or seven years old, uh, um, my brothers and sister were um, making me listen to some some bands like the Beatles, and uh, at, the, at this age, I was beginning to to sing their song, and uh, I was telling my parents, "Yeah, that's what I want to do later." <laughs> and it was really funny. And um, and after, uh, so first I was listening to some pop rock bands, but um, when I was like uh, nine years old, I discovered uh, Deep Purple, Rambo, and uh, ACDC and um, you know the, the legendary bands of the 70s and uh, after was really involved in the, the the growing of the metal in the 80s and uh, style. So, but at first I was I was not uh, I wanted to to make that which was a dream for me, but. Um, uh, it was kind of um, of art for me to, to realize I would do that uh, as a, as a pro musician until maybe I was 20, uh, 21. Because uh, first uh, I was making like like you're doing. Uh, I was making uh, some studies to become a, a journalist, and uh, I was making some interviews with the. Uh, other band, I had a fans in, I had a, a, a radio program too, and uh, on the FM station, and uh, uh, I was inside the scene, but I was not playing a part of it, and um, as I was meeting some musicians, uh, uh, I become friends with some, with some musicians, and uh, sometimes I was singing like that on, on some some pop festival, and uh, they were saying, "Yeah, you should try to make a band." And uh, and uh, after that, yeah, I began to to take part uh, 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 when I was nineteen, twenty uh, of some other bands, and, and that's how it started. But uh, uh, I was not confident until this, this time to to to, to become a, a musician because uh, I always. Um, for for me, uh, I never learned to uh, to play uh, guitar or keyboards uh, at school. I always uh, learned by myself. And the same thing with the with the singing. I was singing on on the albums when I was a kid and uh, a teenager, and uh, that's how I, I learned to, to sing. But I never did some singing, some proper singing lessons. So it's really passion that drives me to to become a, a pro musician. Very cool. Sorry about that. <laughs> the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All my I interviews, use, my dog here. usually makes an, makes some sort of appearance in all my interviews I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Anything else that you want to tell my listeners, t tell the world, everybody that's going to listen to this uh, about you guys? Anything else we haven't talked about that you want to that you want to say? Uh. Uh, I like to say about the, about the album that um, a lot of subjects are quite quite darker on this album, and um, there's a song called "Goodbye" on the album that uh, is a, a tribute to to people uh, like uh, Minai, Carl Arbert, Chris Oliva, uh, Dan Richard, and uh, Ren James Dio. Past. And, and uh, on this song, uh, I try to um, imagine them in the dream. And in the dream, there's no pain. There's only fantasy and, and positive things. And uh, that's a, a kind of metaphor that, that 
uh, of the message they, they, and uh, all the things they they have um, that bring to the scene. And uh, I think one of the power also because I, I, I'm singing in Eternal Fly now is because of them because uh, I was fun first and they opened the way and opened the dreams to reality. Why did what this song is all, it's also about, and uh, that's why I have asked also to Chris Caffrey and uh, and Mark McGee to to play on this song because uh, uh, they have both known some tragic moments in their life. But uh, I think it's a uh, it's also a positive song because uh, these people are bring us a, a lot of. Uh, and um, a, tree, uh, a kind of uh, a force for us to, to continue and to uh, to become stronger in our life. So that was a tribute to these kind of people, and that's why also we we covered uh, Dio with the, the song Night People, and uh, also we we would like the people to. To contact us and tell us what they think about the album, so so we uh, so we can share many things, talk about our subject, and uh, yeah, we we like uh, the fans to uh, to be close to, to to talk on Facebook or MySpace or whatever. So uh, and uh, I I really thanks all the people for for their support and uh, also you for giving us the opportunity to. Uh, uh, to be more known. So yeah, it's great. Yeah, well, that's my pleasure. Thank you for submitting for submitting tunes and getting this whole conversation started. So, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and just it's my pleasure. Just so you know, too, after I uh, after I play the interview back on this Tuesday night, I will uh, play your entire album after the interview, so they'll get a full dose. Oh, great. So. Uh, one other thing I was going to ask you is, would it be possible for you to send me a few tracks from some of the old, the 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 previous albums just to get a feel for the other music for me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want MP3s? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah, because yeah, I'd I I love to them. hear. I like to listen to a band's older stuff and then kind of listen how it progresses. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With no problem. Very cool. Okay, I have one last thing to ask you to do for me. If you can make a couple of radio tags for me, I'd really appreciate it. A couple of radio? Yeah, so what I need you to do is, for one, you know, say your name and say yeah. you're listening to DJ Rem at metalheadradio.com. That can be the first one. Okay, point. yeah. And you can go ahead whenever. Okay, wait, uh, I'll write something down. And, uh, I'll make do you want me to type it in Skype? Sorry? So do you want me to type it in Skype? Yeah, why not? <laughs> there you go. Hi everybody, this is Zelfo from the band Eternal Flies and you're listening to DJ Rem at metalheadradio.com. Crank it up. Nice. That was awesome, dude. Very cool. Well, thank you. Okay, Welcome. so the second one, do the same thing, but leave DJ Rem out. We'll just make a generic station tag for the other DJs. Okay. Hi everybody, this is Zelfa from the band Eternal Flights. You are listening to MetalHeadRadio.com. Perfect, dude. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for taking the time once again, and uh, keep in touch with, with the, what's going on. And, and if there's, if you guys have, if you no, know, any big news or any, anything comes up, make sure you let me know so I can help promote. Yeah, is is there a, a chat room when when you play the the your your program and an interview? Yes, there is. Here, I'll even okay. put, I'll put I'll put that link in the chat for you too. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, because um, Tuesday I will be playing live for another band, but um, I come back with, uh, at four, around 3 or 4 a.m., I think. So uh, I will maybe be able to be uh, a few minutes in the chat room uh, while the interview is aired. Okay. So if the people want to to talk to me, and uh, to, I will be able to, to listen a, a bit. Not a lot, because <laughs> I will be tired, I think. Right. No, <laughs> but no, um, but uh, that's, that's cool, because uh, normally it's, uh, it would be very difficult for me to, to stand up at four, <laughs> you know. There's the uh, there's the link to the chat page. Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you've seen it um, a few minutes ago um, uh, for the interview. Uh, I put uh, I've created an event for for the for the program. Ah, there we go. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah, yeah, but it was kind of noisy. Yeah, uh, I was not. I was listening some, 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 some. There was some music. <laughs> yeah, it was Melhead Radio playing. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, where's this noise so coming said, from? Uh, I have created an, an event on Facebook. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen it just before. Yeah, I did not, but I'll I'll look for it. Okay, okay. Do, do you create an event, and or do you want me to to, to put you as uh, um, I don't know the word for that, but um, you can maybe invite uh, the people from from the event. Yeah, if you want to go ahead, if you want to go ahead and create it, and then I'll invent all my all my friends to it. Yeah, I've already created it, oh, okay. uh, so I will um, invite you, and you can uh, uh, be the co. Cool, um, I don't know the word, but uh, you, you well, you will be able from from the from the page to invite your friend. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I will do that for sure. Great, great. Okay, man. Well, thanks again for everything. I hope you uh, have a good day. Oh, one one last thing. The um later this week after I play the interview back, I'll upload it to YouTube and I'll send you that link as well. It'll be on YouTube. Oh, okay, great. Super. I will put the, the link to on the on, on the pages. Right. So that way we can share Fantastic. It, that way we can share it with everybody. So Okay. okay. And what uh, what is your what are your your favorite tracks on the album? Do you do you have some you, you know I just like the whole thing, to be honest. Yeah. I don't. I've I've listened to it from beginning to end, and I just kind of like the whole thing. I I don't think I could pick out. I'll have to listen to it a few more times. I've listened to it a couple times from beginning to end. I just, you know, I have so much music I listen to every day that it's hard to keep track. Yeah, I can I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, you think, sir. Yeah, the whole because here you know here here's the thing and. It, when I when I listen when bands send in music, if I don't like them personally, that's usually about as far as it goes. I usually I usually delete it and that's as far as I get. And then when I listen to something that I like, um, you know, that's when the wheels start turning. Hey, maybe I should interview these guys, you know. So. That's great. Thank you. So. And uh, do, do you know if, if some uh, some other DJs have um, have downloaded it because I sent it to you know. Uh, I think to to everybody in <laughs> right. at a middle at radio because there was an address where I could send the the stuff and where people were could download it. Yeah, I think so because when I was when I was listening last night, I requested one of your songs and and they played it. So great, yeah. So, but I will um, I'll follow up on that and just make sure that everybody's downloaded it and they're actually playing. And I'll bug the owner to make sure that I don't know if he put any in the rotation. I'll, I'll bug him to put some in rotation too. Okay, it would be great. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get you heard, man. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's fine. That's fantastic. Okay. Well, thanks again. Uh, take care and keep in touch. Okay. No problem with that. And I send you the, the email with the with some other 
other songs. Yeah, please do. I look forward to hearing it. So. Okay. Okay, bud. Have a have a nice day or evening. I don't know. No, yeah. Yes. You have a good <laughs> e- evening morning as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. See you later. Have a nice. Bye. Yep. Bye. Take care.